Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to show you guys how to create your first budget. So creating a budget just means that you're setting aside money for specific categories of spending. So back in the day before we had technology, people used things like envelopes to do their budget. And what they would do is they would put aside some money. So let's say they would put like $300 in this envelope and they would label it gas. And you know, they would do this for everything. So let's say entertainment was one of your categories. You know, you can write an envelope and put entertainment on there. And then, you know, do one for, let's say your rent. Maybe you don't need to do one for your rent because that one's due in the first of every month. Um, but maybe you do one for, you know, shopping. Maybe you have one for, um, you know, restaurants. And maybe you have one for groceries. And what you would do is every time you needed to go buy something, you would go to that envelope and you would put aside a specific amount of money in there each month, you know, depending on how much money you have. And then you would only spend that much. And obviously you would need to fine tune this as time went on but that was one way to kind of keep your finances in order. Now that method is a little bit primitive and in, in today's world where everybody's using credit cards and debit cards, you know, it makes more sense to have a digital option. And I personally use a tool called Mint and they have the option to track all of your expenses and aggregate all of your accounts that you may have. And also they have a mobile app that you can use to keep track of things on the go. So let's go ahead and show you guys that on my screen here. So this here is the mint.com website and what you wanna do is you wanna sign up for a new account. So I already have an account, so I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you first log in. So this here is probably the first screen you're gonna see, and what Mint is doing is it's asking you to add your accounts in. And so it needs to know like what your spending accounts are and what your income accounts are. So the best thing to do is to link up your checking account or savings account in here, as well as your credit card accounts. All right guys, once you guys have added your accounts in here, you'll start to see the power of Mint. So you can go into the overview page and you can see now your cash accounts have been added. So this is your checking and your savings. If you have more, you can add more if you want. Um, you can see that your credit cards have been added and this is kind of the spending accounts that I have for this video. And then down here, it even tracks things like your net worth. So it just takes all of your assets and subtracts your debt. And this is basically how much you're worth. So if you had a lot of accounts and homes and investments, you can kind of quickly see what your net worth is. But the power of Mint is in the budgets. So if you go to budgets, you can see here, I've already created a sample budget, but normally this page would be empty and you can just hit create budget and add your own categories. These are the categories that I would suggest you start with just to keep it simple because Mint has so many different categories that you may be overwhelmed by just the amount of stuff that they have. So I have my income in here and you can put whatever income you want. Just put the amount that you're expecting to get every month here. So let's say you made, you know, $5,000 a month, you can just put 5,000 here. Or if you have dual income and you made $8,000 a month, you can just put 8,000. And that'll kind of be the baseline for your budget. And down here is where all the expenses come in. So you can set up, you know, whatever categories you want, but I typically have like, you know, gas because I drive. I have all my bills and utilities lumped into one so I can kind of see all my bills in one place. Um, I have an entertainment budget here and this number can vary depending on person. Uh, food and dining is just literally all of my groceries and eating out and eating at restaurants just lumped into one. Um, mortgage, you know, depending on what your mortgage is, you can put whatever amount here. And then miscellaneous is nice because this is just for everything else that doesn't really fit into a category. So you can see here, it even lumps in stuff that kind of is missing a location. And it looks like I have a bank fee in here for some reason. You can click on that and look at it and you can see, oh, it looks like it's just a minimum balance. So this isn't even a bank fee. So Mint also lets you do things like hide things from your budget because this doesn't, doesn't really affect your budget. And when you go back to your budgets page, now it's gone. And so the nice thing about this is, let's say you click on one of these green ones because this one looks like it's lumping in some stuff. You actually can see all the bills that were lumped into there. And you can see I have a mobile phone bill in here that's $45, that's why it's there. And let's say I'm expecting $230 because you know it's the beginning of the month right now and you know your energy bill may not be in here, your insurance bill may not be in here and your various other bills may not be in here. But let's say you're still fine tuning your budget. You can always change the number here. And these budgets will roll over to the next month. So next month, when the new month comes in, it'll just start everything fresh with the last uh, numbers that you have. So you'll kind of start to fine tune these things. And the nice thing about this is when you look at all your bills, you can see, okay, these are all my bills. And you can see like, okay, my mobile phone bill, maybe you have a $300 phone bill and that's taking up 50% of all your bills that might make you think twice about your phone bill. So you can quickly categorize things. Um, so here, this is a mortgage payment, so you know nothing special there. So this actually is set up incorrectly, but you can change this easily to 1632, and now it's an appropriate amount. So the nice thing about Mint is as you're buying things, these categories will start filling up, and things will sometimes go down to everything else, as you saw earlier. And what you can do is you can manually go into that transaction. So here, I'll just use this as an example and you can put that into wherever it needs to go. So let's say gas and fuel. 
and now you'll see it goes into the gas and fuel category and now let's say you had a different category like shopping is missing in here so we can add shopping and let's say you have a really high sh or maybe let's say you want you think you, you're spending eight hundred dollars in shopping you can add that in here and then as you're going to the store and buying things on Amazon you can start categorizing things under shopping and then you can start to see this green bar go way up and let's say you thought you only spent 800 and, and by the end of the month let's say you spent like 1200 you can click on this and you can start seeing where all of those transactions are and like I mentioned in my other video you, you're probably not gonna know how much money you're spending day to day and this will give you a quick way to group things together and show you that running total now I wanted to show you an example of mymint.com. Now my income hasn't been updated since I left my job, but I just put a number in there. And you can see here, the beginning of the month is gonna be you know, a lot of zeros. So like gas, I haven't spent any money at the gas station yet. It's only the 4th of February, so you're not gonna see anything there. But like in bills, you can click on this and you can start to see like, okay, my bills are my electricity bill and my life insurance. You know, So this is showing me that it's about $289 so far. And every month I'm expecting about $500 of bills to be paid here. And so this number should never be higher than that. And then like entertainment, I have $200 already. It looks like I've spent money on party supplies. And then if you go down to food and dining, you can see I've already spent a bunch of money at like McDonald's and you know doing some grocery shopping. I went to Costco, it looks like. So you can quickly see you know everything and where your money is going. And you know there's really no guesswork in it. And then as you're kind of getting closer to this 800 number, for example, here, you'll probably stop spending money on food and dining, or maybe you'll wait a little bit and wait till the next month before you go grocery shopping. That way, um, you know you don't go over budget. And the nice thing about all of these limits here on the right side is you can see it actually adds all of that up here. So let's say your income was ten thousand dollars and you're spending fifty seven hundred dollars. Well, you're gonna have about four thousand two hundred dollars left over every month that you can put towards something else. You know, maybe it's savings. And Mint has a goals feature you can use, and you can maybe put that money towards like, let's say you're saving for a home or saving for a down payment or maybe paying off debt. You can put some of that money in here, and when you add a goal, it'll actually subtract that number out as if you're spending that money. So you can put it away for you know something like debt or you know student loans or whatnot. And I actually used this goals feature when I was paying off my first house. You know, I had a goal of $35,000 that I wanted to pay, and you can see here, you know, it was achieved. So this is a really nice feature to kind of keep tabs on everything that's happening in your expenses. The nice thing about this is there actually is a mobile app, and I'll show you guys what the mobile app looks like. It's exactly the same thing, and you can kind of see where all of your budgets are and where you're at on everything, and that way, you know, you can have that on the fly with you as you're kind of going around and doing shopping and whatnot. So you can easily download the mint.com app through the app store, and you just type in mint, and you'll see that there's a mint personal finance and you can see there's about a half a million downloads already and it looks like i need to update my app but you know clearly it's a popular app so once you log into mint you can see here you can go to your february budget that i showed you guys earlier and you can see all the categories that i had and it's all the same thing and you actually can look at each of the individual purchases like earlier and you may be at the grocery store thinking have i spent too much money on you know food and groceries and you can kind of look at this budget and see you know where you're at really quickly and you can kind of see where all the money went one other useful thing within Mint is you can look at trends and you can look at things by like merchant. So in the last month here, you can change the date range if you like, but in the last month here, I've spent uh, most of my money, it looks like it's been going to my mortgage and then my daycare bill. And then it was uh, Vietnamese Chinese New Year last month. So I gave a bunch of money away to the little kids. And then, you know, gas looks like it's pretty up there. My parents' birthday, I gave them some money and you know you can see like walmart it was probably the next highest spend you know the nice thing about this report is let's say you had like you know a lot of starbucks purchases it's probably going to show up up here at the top and that'll kind of get you to think about you know where you're spending all of your money it'll tally everything together um, as best it can so if you go to the last 12 months you can scroll down and you can see like most of my money looks like it's being spent on daycare and this is just me paying my mom to watch my kids and then here you can see like Costco is my number one spend it looks like at, at any other store it looks like I'm spending most of my money there uh, which is expected because we do go to Costco a lot and we do do a lot of bulk buying and then gasoline you know for driving and then all these are just my mortgages so it doesn't really matter and here we have Walmart which is the next highest spend that I have and then Amazon as expected I do buy a couple things from Amazon here and there and then AT&T is just my cell phone bill so I can probably take a look at that and figure out what's going on with that because that is a pretty high amount and then my energy bill so you can kind of see the power of uh, using trends to kind of see where you're spending your money you know if you're if you notice that you're spending like five thousand dollars at Starbucks in the last 12 months 
you know, maybe that will kind of change your attitude. Instead of going every day, you may just go once a week or once every other day or something like that. I know for me, a long time ago, I used to spend a lot of money on Amazon. And then when I saw that, I started to, you know, reduce the amount of money I spent there because I ended up just buying a whole bunch of junk that I didn't need. And, you know, this tool kind of opened my eyes up and showed me that, you know, I was spending way too much money there. All right, guys, as you saw, it was pretty simple to set up a budget. Just got to connect a couple of accounts and create your first budget. I recommend you just stick to the categories that I suggest because it's going to make life a little bit easier. And Mint is going to do its best to kind of categorize things, but it's going to be up to you to log in once in a while and categorize the expenses properly because Mint doesn't know 100% who all the merchants are out there. They'll do what they can to help you, but most likely you're going to have to do a little bit of work just to make sure everything is aligned correctly. At the end of every month, you shouldn't have a category that says everything else. You should categorize everything that's in there into one of the categories that you already defined. That way you know exactly where all your money's going and that way you stick within that budget and that leftover amount that you see on the right side of the screen will be the amount that you actually have left over for savings. All right, you guys, hopefully that video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with one of your friends. And if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you're aware when new videos are uploaded. And as always, have a nice day.